Good morning, Allen Temple family. Good morning. 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 Good morning, Allen Temple family. Um, my name is Tyus Scott, and on behalf of the Prayer Warriors Ministry, I want to thank you for joining us today. Um, we are anticipating an awesome time in the Lord. Um, but before we get anything started, of course, at a prayer event, it is always right to start uh, with prayer and the word. So please receive um, a leader of our congregational care cluster, um, Reverend Jesse Land, with our opening scripture and prayer. And the next voice you will hear after that will be our very own pastor, uh, the Reverend Dr. Jacqueline A. Thompson, um, coming in her own way. Good morning to all. Can you hear me? Yes, Reverend Land, we can hear you. Good morning. Thank you, thank you, thank you. <clears throat> let, let us uh, start off with scripture, please. First John 5, 14 and 15 say, confidence and compassion in prayer. <clears throat> now this is the confidence that we have in him, that if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. <clears throat> and if we know that he hears us, Whatever we ask, we know that we have the petition that we have asked of him. Let us pray. Lord God, <clears throat> we come to thank you. You promised to be with us always. And we thank you for your presence with us right now. Today, we give thanks we give our hearts and our minds to thee and speak your words, Father, to us today and always. We ask that by the power of the Holy Spirit, give us your guidance, your wisdom, and your support as we begin this prayer seminar. Help us to engage in meaningful discussions and allow us to grow closer to thee. Bless our guest speaker and may the Holy Spirit guide us to open our minds and our hearts to receive what you have sent to us by way of our guest speaker. Father, we pray for our pastor, our pastor emeritus, and all church leaders and our church family. And Heavenly Father, we will continue to look to thee from which come in our help. We ask this in Jesus' name, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Good morning, Alan Temple. Good morning. Good morning. Okay. There you are. I was going to say, wait a minute, where are the people? Uh, good morning. It's so good to see so many of you on for this prayer seminar. So certainly on behalf of all of our church and our leadership, I want to take the opportunity to welcome you. I certainly thank God for our prayer warriors ministry, for Sister Taya, her entire team for planning this time of sharing with us. And certainly want to welcome our guest facilitator, Dr. Rose Owens-West. She talked with us during our spring um, Family Life Institute our Biblical Family Life Institute on Prayer, and the people were so blessed that she was asked to come back again. So I know it's going to be a great time of sharing, great time of power, and I hopefully a great time of prayer. And so I remember one of the books that changed my life as it relates to prayer is by a pastor. You all may know his name, you may not, by the name of Bill Hybels. And he wrote a book um, entitled Too Busy Not to Pray. 
Because I don't know about you, but sometimes we are so caught up in everything that happens in life. Prayer becomes a byproduct. But his book was a reminder to me that taking time to slow down and pray and deal with prayer is really life changing. And so, again, for the time that you are sacrificing today, I pray that you see God's blessing, some 30, some 60, some 100 fold. And I pray that it's a blessed, blessed time of learning and a blessed time of intercession and prayer. Thank you so much, Sister Ty, for this opportunity to be able to greet the people. And I don't know if there's occasion for you to share this, but for those of you who are here with us now, I know that there is an invite uh, button there. Perhaps you want to let some folks know that they should join us as well, because everybody, everybody, everybody needs everything that comes with prayer. Amen. Amen. Have a great day. Grand rising, Sister Rochelle. I see you. Grand rising. Amen. Thank you so much, Pastor. Um, and thank you, Reverend Lamb, for just setting um, the atmosphere for us. So um, as we get started, just a few housekeeping things um, just to enjoy the event. So um, just first of all, uh, we will take some questions from our guest speaker at the end of her presentation. So put those in the chat. Um, and we will gather those from the chat and then we will do a moderated Q&A at the end of the um, her time of sharing. Um, be sure to get your Bible and your notepad um, to take notes um, and write down all of the references that will be shared. That will be really important for you as you review these notes later and as you put into practice what you learned today. And then the other thing, of course, is just to help limit the distractions for our speaker um, and for all of the people who will be leading, please um, help us out by staying on mute, amen. <laughs> um, just to make sure that there are no interruptions as the word is going forward. So I would appreciate um, that and I'm you know, excited uh, for what we're going to hear today. And so now it is my pleasure to introduce to you our speaker. Um, our guest speaker, Dr. Rose Owens-West, she is a woman of God who strives to help fellow Christians love and understand his word. Um, she's an education consultant working with state departments of education and school districts, focusing on educational equity and civil rights for elementary, middle, and high school students. She is a member of Landmark Restoration Christian Fellowship in Oakland, where Reverend Kimberly Heidelberg is the senior pastor, and we know Reverend Heidelberg. Um, in 2015, she was ordained as an elder teacher um, at her church, and she is an active contributor to the Center for Healing and Wholeness Prayer Ministry, and she serves as a group leader with the Richmond, California Bible Study Fellowship class. Allen Temple family and friends, please join me in welcoming Dr. Rose Owens-West. Welcome, Dr. West. Good morning. <clears throat> Good morning. Good morning. God bless you all. And thank you for making me feel so welcome and so glad to be here. Thank you all. Um, it is just an honor and a blessing and a privilege. And so I want to thank Sister Scott and the Prayer Warriors Ministry for inviting me. Thank you, Pastor, Pastor Thompson. I want to say thank you to you for that warm greeting and also for approving for me to participate both in the Family Life Institute and again today. I am just thrilled to be here and I'm excited about what God is going to do in the time that we're together today. I just want to, I, I thank God for the prayers that have gone forth, but I'm going to ask just one more indulgence. We're going to pray quickly before we begin. Pray with me. Heavenly Father, I just thank you, Lord, for this opportunity that you have provided for all of us. Now, Lord, this is your time. We are your people. Have your way, Heavenly Father. Have your way. And we thank you for this time. We are eager to hear how the Spirit will move in our hearts and draw us closer to you. These things we pray and we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, Powering up our prayer life, my goodness, what, what a topic, what, how appropriate, and um, praying with power, and I just am, again, thrilled with this opportunity. So next slide, please. Uh, 
as I said, I'm very grateful for this opportunity. Anytime that God calls us apart to focus on him, to spend time in his word is a privilege and an honor. And I thank all of you who are here today. Thank you for setting time aside and thank you for your prayers as we go through our day together. Next slide, please. There are several PowerPoints as I ask the Lord, how shall we address this topic and build on the time that we spent together in the Family Life Institute? And so the Lord gave uh, three key points. And so powering up our prayer life. The first one, recognize who our God is. And some of you may say, really? That's where we're going to start? Absolutely. But of course we know who God is. Of course we're praying to the true and living God. Most recently I had a situation where I was part of, a, of a, an audience and we were encouraged to pray. And the person said, pray to whomever your God is. And I felt, ooh, I just felt a little cringe in my spirit and, and began to say, Lord, I pray you. I pray you, Lord, the true and living God. And so we always want to recognize who our God is. In the beginning, God. PowerPoint number one, recognize him. Next slide, please. We want to recognize God because there is a place that we get to, a place of knowing, a place of understanding, a place of appreciation, and ultimately a place, a place, excuse me, of awe. And so we begin to focus on him. So one of the things in recognizing God. Understand there is no thing that is too hard for our God. He said it in Jeremiah. I'm the Lord. I'm the God of all mankind. I'm, is there anything too hard for me? And sometimes in the press of life, and, and thank you, Pastor Jackie, for that, in the busyness of life, we are, we are caught up in our emotions and in what is happening with us. And we, we may uh, actually not focus on the fact that there really isn't anything too hard for God. Whatever it is that we're in the midst of, God can handle. God has an answer. And so when we recognize him, we want to understand that there is nothing too hard for our God. In the beginning, God, he is our power source. Imagine, if you will, yourself as an electrical outlet. You've got to plug into the power source. God is the author of the word. He is the word become flesh in Jesus. He is his purpose is expressed in the word. The word has power. And so when we recognize who God is in the beginning, God, and then there is nothing no thing, whatever it is that is too hard for him, there is nothing that surprises him. There is nothing that he cannot do. That's how we typically think of that, that there's nothing that he can't do, that he's all powerful and he can be in charge. But we also, if I may take just a little bit of liberty, I think we should also think of that in terms of there's nothing that surprises God. He knows all about us. After all, he is our father God. He is our creator God. 
And so nothing surprises him. He knows our strengths. He knows our talents. He knows our desires. He knows our weaknesses. He knows our sins. He knows our needs. Nothing shocks him. Nothing about our circumstances, our conditions, or our situations confounds him or confuses him. And so there's nothing that's too hard for him. And I will come back to that point that there is nothing that shocks or confuses or surprises our God. Next slide, please. And so when we say recognize God, PowerPoint number one, we're thinking about give time and thought, give meditation to whom is it that we pray. God is eternal. He's not bound by time. Sometimes we have situations, they may be medical, they may be financial, they may be other situations that are time bound. But remember, God is the creator of time. He is not bound by time. Our God, who, to whom is it that we pray? He's all powerful. He's omnipresent. He's everywhere we need him to be. Remember how David put it? Below, if, behold, if I make my bed in hell, there you are with me. In the worst times and seasons and places of our life, we can find God with us. He is omnipresent. A quick testimony. My, my sisters and brothers are we're kind of spread out in different states. I get a call. I will never forget this. One Monday, uh, Monday morning, my brother is in the hospital in Michigan. I get a call later that day. My sister in Arkansas is being rushed to the hospital. And then yet another call the same day about my sister in Texas. And I'm saying, Lord, but I leave it up to you, God. You can cover us all because whether in California, Michigan, Texas, or Arkansas, guess what? Our God was there. Our God was with us. So when we think about our God is omnipresent, oh, yes, we want to plug into that power source. Our God is omniscient. He knows all things, understands all things. He created all things. Our God knows. Our God is righteous. Our God is truth. Our God is faithful. Many years ago, someone said to me, our God is too good to do evil and too wise to make a mistake. Now, that may be simple, but we, we use those things and those understandings to, to, if you will, really enter in to an understanding of who God is. PowerPoint number one, you want power in your prayer. Understand, draw in, press in to who God is. There's no beginning and no end in him. He's without measure. He's without limits. Infinitely boundless. The only thing that our God cannot do is lie. He's not a man that he should lie, but he is faithful. He is true. And so there's a verse in Lamentations, the steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His mercies never come to an end. They are new every morning. Great is his faithfulness. And so understanding to whom it is we are praying. We don't want to be whomever you, whomever you want to pray to. No, 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 no. We pray to the true and living God. And he is all these things. And our words are limited. He's so much more. Remember I said, we want to press in to the awesomeness of God. Because that brings up reverence 
That ring brings up the, the posture of prayer. Uh, should we pray standing, kneeling with our eyes closed? No, the posture of prayer is reverence. Reverentially approaching God because he is so wonderful, so awesome. That is our God. Next slide, please. And so our God is our creator. He's our provider. He made us. We are fearfully and wonderfully made. Just recently, again, in a conversation, rare diseases. But our God, our creator, he understands them. He knows all about them. So when we reach to him as our Jehovah Rapha, don't be afraid. There's no disease. We may not be able to spell them. We may not be able to pronounce them. But there's nothing that our Jehovah Rapha, our healer, because he is our creator, he can't address with his healing anointing that he can't bless. He's our Jehovah Jireh. He is our provider. He's our protector. Oh my goodness, he is our Jehovah Shalom. He's our peace. When the world presses in and begins to crush on your mental state and your emotional state and even your physical condition, your blood pressure is getting high because of things that are going on. Our God gives us a peace that passes our understanding. I don't know, but, but I'm okay. I'm okay. We may say to family or friends, God is, God's given me a peace about it. A peace that passes understanding. His banner over us is love. He is our help, a very present help in time of trouble. He is our refuge when my heart is overwhelmed. Lead me to the rock that is higher than I. God is our refuge and he's so much more. And so you see, when you begin to see who God is, when we focus and we just press in to just wanting to focus and meditate on who our God is, on who we're serving, on whom it is we're praying to, it takes us to a place. It takes us to a place of awe, of reverence, of comfort, of security, of assurance. First PowerPoint, plug in, recognize who our God is. Next slide, please. PowerPoint number two. In our, um, uh, class, we uh, a few weeks ago, we talked about a definition of prayer. And for today, I said, let me see how prayer is generally defined. And I found this in um, Wikipedia, and I modified it, that it's an action that act, seeks to activate a rapport with God the Father. Now, you know, I modified that because um, Wikipedia didn't exactly say God the Father, but I did. It's we want to have rapport with God. I said, yes, that's true. We want to worship and adore him. And our opening prayer, he talked about intimacy with God. And we want to deliberately communicate with him. So this leads to our point number two. Next slide, please that we need to understand the purpose of prayer. Next slide, please. The definition of prayer that we had in our class was that understand that prayer is a supernatural tool created by God. It allows us to communicate with him so that his plans for our lives and because God resides in the supernatural, so does it do his plans for us. We want to bring the supernatural to fruition in our lives in the natural realm. Let's break that down a little bit. 
You see, because, uh, and something I want to emphasize, so often, yes, most people will say that prayer is communicating with God, but then we focus on one dimension of that, which is we talk to God. And oh, yes, you want to get comfortable. You want to get where you know that God knows you by name, right? He knows my name. You want to get into that place. And so, yes, you want to be comfortable, Uh, And when I say comfortable, I don't mean irreverent. Remember, we still want to be reverential, but you want to be comfortable. You want to be at ease. You want to be secure in communicating with God. And so we emphasize talking to him. But my sisters and brothers, communication is always two ways. It's always bi-directional. If it's unidirectional, there's not much communication going on. There's some talking, but maybe not communicating. And so remember that it's talking to God. But in prayer, guess what? We also want to hear from God. We want to give him space and opportunity to talk back to us. So it's two-way communication so that his plans will come to fruition. His will, if you might, will come to to bear in our lives, the lives of our family, the lives of our friends, the lives of our church, the lives of our community, in our workplace, wherever we are. We want to be the instrument of God's will being done in the earth. That's the definition of that was given. And I want to give credit where credit is due. That's Pastor Susie Caldwell, the author of the book that we use, Praying to to Change Your Life. And so next slide, please. And so we are called to pray, to communicate with God, to partner. Guess what? We are partnering with him to release his will in the earth. That communication, remember, is two way. And we're partnering. We become his instruments. Prayer is supernatural. So often when we think of, we focused on ourselves. (coughs) Excuse me. But remember, putting God first. The first point, recognizing God. God first. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. We'll come back to that point. But we are communicating. We are becoming his instruments to release his will in the earth over whatever is the situation that we're bringing to him, whatever is the condition, the circumstance, or the issue. Excuse me. Next slide, please. And so that was PowerPoint number two. PowerPoint number three, then, pray as Jesus taught. Jesus taught us how to pray. We begin and end with adoring God. He taught us what to pray. Thy will be done. And he gave us the sequence or the order of prayer, adoration, our needs, then forgiveness. Hmm. A little quick point on forgiveness, if you will allow me. You know, there is a, I I will use the word tradition, but Uh, I'm using that lightly for lack of a better term, okay? But there's this this, um, tradition that we have that uh, in order to to approach God, we must be so mindful of our sinful condition. We must be so mindful of our, our wretchedness. And so forgiveness takes a, uh, our seeking forgiveness, if you will, takes a level of precedence in prayer um, that, if you will allow me, I think needs to shift just a little bit. And let me hasten to say, God first, not us, 
not our sinfulness, not our condition, not even our need. God first. God is greater than all our sin. There's a wonderful hymn that expresses that. Remember, God is greater than all our sin. Yes, we're going to mess up. And when we do and we recognize that we're doing and when the Holy Spirit brings that conviction into our hearts and our spirits, yes, run quickly and seek God's forgiveness because his word says if he is faithful and just to uh, to uh, forgive our sins and to heal us from all unrighteousness. And so, yes, there there is an appropriate time for us to uh, seek forgiveness for our sins, our iniquities, our trespasses, our wrongdoing, our willful nature, our selfishness, hatred, whatever. Yes, we need to seek God and know he will forgive us. But that doesn't take precedent over knowing who God is, recognizing God in prayer. We want God and his holiness and his awesomeness to be first. And that's what Jesus taught. One of the things that I pray will not happen today, that we walk away, uh, that God gave us, Jesus gave us the model prayer, but but don't let it be a formula. Let the Holy Spirit take what we're learning and work that in our spirits and work that in our prayer lives. And so uh, we begin with adoring God. We put him up first and we pray that his will, then we get to our needs. Even our needs come before the forgiveness in his order. Why? Because when we adore him, recognize him, and then when we say his will be done, we put ourselves in appropriate um, uh, relationship, in appropriate position to who God is. God, then, you know, we're appropriately saying, God, I'm dependent on you. God, everything, you are my everything. You are my source. You are my provider. You're my strength. Where would I be without you, God? When you put him first, then we're in right position, right relationship to him. So that's why needs come next. And then forgiveness. And God, you know, I'm, I'm seeking to be more like Jesus. I want the mind of Christ. I want to do what as Jesus, I want to say only what Jesus, uh, I want to be as Jesus. I want to say only what you have me to say. I want to do only what you tell me to do. You see the order that Jesus gave? Power, PowerPoint three, pray as Jesus taught. I know some of us learned to pray at grandma's knees. Some of us are here today because of grandmother and mother and daddy and pop-ups prayers for us. Oh yes, and I thank God for it. But God has called us at this time to examine what Jesus taught. There's a reason. The times are different than they've ever been in my life. There's a now need for powering up our prayer lives, all of us. And so this is what God has given us. PowerPoint number three, pray as Jesus taught us to pray. Next slide, please. And so why wouldn't we? <laughs> if Jesus said it, it ought to be enough for us, right? So look at what and, and, and again, I want to give credit where the, the book that we had, and I began to think about that. Oh, yeah. Jesus taught us to pray God-centered prayers. Because why? They're productive. They're scriptural. Guess what? It's strategic, remember? Our positioning. When we love God and adore him, what does he say? When the ways, when our ways please the Lord, He gives us the desires of our heart. Come on. And so it's intimate. We're in relationship. Oh God, my father, I talk to you and he talks to me. Remember that sound, song in the garden? I come to the garden alone. He walks with me and he talks with me. You know, sometimes we're, we're a little jealous of Adam because God was walking with them and talk. Well, he can do that with us if we allow. 
It produces faith. It's our relationship with God that counts. It's powerful. We're bringing glory to God. It exalts Jesus. It magnifies the Holy Spirit. And so even in the way that Jesus taught us to pray, we see the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. It defeats all the works of darkness. Why wouldn't you want to pray? So we're looking at Matthew chapter 6 and how Jesus taught us to pray. And I need to move quickly along. The time goes so fast. But if you look at that, study, the, 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 the model prayer is also, also offered, excuse me, in Luke uh, chapter 11, I believe. Yes, Luke chapter 11. But in Matthew, we get a, a more, if you will, full exposition of it. And toward the end of that chapter, is when he talks about seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things will be added to you. And just before that, he talks about, you know, don't worry about what you're going to eat or drink. You see, he builds on how he's taught the disciples and is now teaching us to pray. And then he's saying, and then he reinforces that, if you will, going through the rest of the chapter, because he says, put the kingdom of God first. Put the kingdom of God. He knows your needs. Now, why, why does Jesus in say uh, in the model prayer, give us this day our daily bread, speaking to our needs, because we are dependent on God and because his word instructs us. Cast our cares on him because he cares for us. He didn't expect us to walk this life alone. He didn't expect us to go through this, but he did say, I came that you might have life and have it more abundantly. How are we going to get there? We get there in relationship and prayer with him. Next slide, please. And so thy will be done. Oh, my goodness, Jesus, the living word, the word made flesh is telling us that we want God's will to be done. Remember, it's a supernatural thing we're entering. We're not bringing God to us. We're going into his space, into his realm, into the realm of the supernatural. Prayer time is a precious time. Prayer is a precious experience. And when you enter into prayer and you are releasing your adoration and praise, and then you give your heartfelt concerns to him. Oh, my goodness. How God will speak. How God will touch. How God will reassure. Oh, yes. Our God is good. Our God is grateful. Great. And so for that, we thank him. And so thy will be done. When we acknowledge his authority, that we are submitting, Lord, it's your will be done. There's a place of acceptance, of calm, of peace. Oh, I, I, I wish I had a little more time. I talk your ears off. <laughs> Because God has done some marvelous things in my life through prayer. And just where I could just, as they say, exhale. And I had to trust him. But I couldn't do anything about changing anything. But I look, I'm, I'm here today before you because of God. Because of his will being done in my life because my back was against the wall and, and I was learning and we are yet learning and we're going to continue to learn. I'm going to hurry on because my time is up. Y'all heard my alarm go off. So God and his word. So why do we pray the word? Because God and his word are one. All the things that we said about God are true of him. God and his word are one. He's the word is eternal. The word it is powerful. The word is omnipresent and it's full of righteousness, truth and faith. Because remember what we learn in Timothy, all scripture is inspiration of God. It is God breathed God's word. And so we learn to pray his word. And so one point that I want to get to quickly. Next slide, please. 
when God is the author of the word, and when we begin to, we, you got to study the word. You got to get a love for the word. Get an understanding. Oh, Lord. Uh, oh, uh, oh, mm, mm, going too fast. Open my eyes that I may see wonderful things in your word. That's out of Psalms. Pray that. Ask God to open your understanding to his word. And then he plants his word in your heart. So what, when prayer time comes up, no, you're not reaching for the Bible. Oh, what's the scripture? The Holy Spirit then moves and brings that word up. Remember, it's a promise. The spirit will bring all things to your remembrance whatsoever I have taught you. When you get that word down in your spirit, the Holy Spirit then brings it up in those situations and times and places when you need to pray and you need an answer from God. He brings it. Oh, yes, he does. Oh, yes, he does. And so uh, praying the word. And so when you're pray when you're in your Bible time studying the word, not prayer time, but when you're studying the word, you're trying to understand and learn the word of God. What are you hearing? Read out loud sometimes because then you see it, you're speaking it and you're hearing it. And so that remember that two way communication I talked about? Well, the two way communication in prayer comes back because when the Holy Spirit brings that word back up to you, that's God talking. That's God speaking. He's speaking his own word right back to you. And then it goes beyond that. And the spirit in when you surrender to the Holy Spirit, he will take you where he needs you to be in the prayer, in your prayer life. Generally, in your prayer situation, the specific situation in which you're praying. So praying the word. God is the author. He's the author and finisher of our faith. He's the author of his word. His word became flesh. His word is real. He is his word, his will. So many times we have the question, how do I pray God's will? And I'm supposed to pray God's will. Well, pray his word. This is the message. PowerPoint number three. Pray God's word. It will give you wisdom. It will give you confidence. It will give you peace. So, all scripture given by inspiration of God, that we may be made perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Is not that the purpose of prayer? If you really think about it, we want to be perfect before God, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. And so what God's word does then, it brings forth his will. It produces his will in the earth. It guides and directs us. It connects us. It strengthens. It heals. It nourishes. It's the two-edged sword. It removes and it repairs. His word prevails. Heaven and earth shall pass away. But my word will not pass away, he says. Partner with God, become the voice of God, pray using God's word. And then my last point, when we pray as God, next slide, please. When we pray as God would have us to pray with these three PowerPoints, an exchange takes place. We increase in our focus on the supernatural character of God, on who God is, and on what the purpose of prayer is to bring his will forth, then we naturally decrease our focus on self. We begin to cast our cares on him and trust him and rely on him. Next slide. God's word is the power in our prayer. And that, my sisters and brothers, I think I'm a little over time. That is my presentation. May God bless you and be richly um, blessed by this. In Jesus' name, amen. <laughs> amen amen you you could have kept going uh dr Owens. you really could have kept going um weren't we blessed weren't we blessed um i i do have at least one question in the chat i have a, a question myself um but if there are those who want to ask other um questions um that would um please drop those in the chat um 
And yes, um, I see that there's a, um, Sister Janine, do you mind going back to the last slide um, of Dr. Owens West presentation? There was a question uh, requesting to see the scriptures that were um, on that last slide. So maybe we can just capture that really quickly or those of you who are online can maybe take a quick screenshot of those. And Sister Ty, mm -hmm. I do see a question here from um, I, 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 DJ Richardson. Yes, I was gonna ask you that after we, um, I just wanted to give people an opportunity to just um, capture these last, um, these scriptures that were referenced here. Yes, um, so that folks can write them down, or as I said, take a screenshot um, or take a quick picture with your phone um, to grab these. And I'll give one more minute for that. And then, um, then yes, well, then we can get to that question. Then I also had a, a question for you. Thanks, Sister Janine. Um, so again, thank you so much for coming back to us. Um, just really, really appreciate just your knowledge knowledge about prayer. And obviously you are a practitioner of prayer and that comes across in um, just how you um, how you shared. Um, Sister Rochelle, if you can put your question in the chat and I'll um, ask it. So the one of the questions we received and thank you um, DJ Richardson for giving this question. Um, so the question is, did I hear you correctly when you said that in, or, in the order of prayer, we ask for our needs before we ask for forgiveness? If so, what is the reason? Again, I've been taught that the order is praying praise, adoration for God, um, pardon, forgiveness for sins, then petition. And I will say, and I've said, shared this with you as well. Um, I was also taught the acts method, adoration, confession, thanksgiving, and then supplication. And so many of us were taught it, it basically to put forgiveness before we ask any kind of thing from God. And so could you elaborate a little bit more on why you're recommending the order that you recommended? Yes, ma'am. Jack can make my, sure my mic was on mm -hmm. and asking God to give me wisdom and speak through me because mm -hmm. I don't want to offend. Mm -hmm. We... I've been taught many things, right? But we know in this Christian journey that as we go along, as we walk with God, he teaches us. Mm -hmm. And so there's some unlearning mm -hmm. that we have to do as well as learning. And so I too was taught those ways to pray. But I'm going to I'm going to assert that if you will, the word of God is our final authority. And on that premise, then I commend to you to study the Lord's Prayer. We typically call it the Lord's Prayer, but it really is the model prayer. It is the model that Jesus gave in answer to the question, how shall we pray? And so in Matthew chapter six, and I commend to you to read and study this and let the Lord speak to your hearts. But <clears throat> Matthew chapter six, verses, uh, let's, I want to get to the exact place. Verse six, started verse six. Mm, okay. And um, he gives some instructions. And then in verse nine, he begins to say, after this manner, therefore pray ye. In other words, in this way, begin to pray. Mm -hmm. And when you look at the order of things, our father, which in heaven, hallowed be that name. That's that praise and adoration. Mm -hmm. The next verse 10, thy kingdom come, thy will be done. Second point in what Jesus taught us to pray is to pray God's will being done. 
Then you get verse 11. Give us this day our daily bread. You're praying for your needs. And it is only when you get to verse 12. After adoration, after thy kingdom come, in other words, thy will be done. And after we present, give us this day our needs. Then in verse 12, forgive our debts as we forgive our debtors. Now, what I, and so when I was teaching a few minutes ago, what I said is that prayer is a place of exchange. This is what the Lord gave me to give you all today. Prayer, mm -hmm. the place of prayer or the, 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 the experience of prayer is a place of exchange. And the exchange is that we, we lift God up. We give him first place. We exalt him and his will in the earth. And then we become, and so that's the increase, that scripture that I quoted, as God increases, we decrease. We shift our priority. As human beings, we are selfish creatures. We think of self-preservation. Mm -hmm. But in prayer, you want prayer, powerful prayer. We exalt God above everything and his will. And then our needs are, and, and we become secondary. And so because we are praying to the true and living God, and remember, Jesus is access. We are saved because we have accepted Jesus as our Lord and Savior. We, be, we, have, a, we have believed in our hearts and confessed with our mouths that Jesus is the Son of God. And so we know that Jesus was the propitiation for our sins. Jesus' blood took care of our sins. And so for those mishaps and those missteps and those things that we do that we know don't please God, yes, we do want forgiveness. But in the way Jesus taught us to pray, our forgiveness is not primary because it's not about us. Remember the definition, it's a supernatural event, a supernatural experience where we're adoring God and instruments of his will being done in the earth. And so our, our self comes after that. And if Jesus said, adore him, hallowed be his name, thy kingdom come, give us this day our daily bread. Because what needs before forgiveness says needs, and, and what I said a minute ago, thank you, Holy Spirit, for bringing it back to me, is that when we play in that order, after adoration and saying to God, we, we pray your will to be done in the earth, then our needs, we're, to, we're, we're expressing our total dependence on him. We are nothing without God. And so our total dependency, and then you're in a place where you're not just saying, Lord, I'm sorry, right? But you're in a place of true repentance. Lord, forgive me. I want to change. I want to do better. I want to be better. So does that mean, and, and so that's that flow. Our God is great. Your will. Lord, I'm dependent on you. Everything I need comes from you. And now, Lord, wretch that I am, clean me up, forgive me. What did Paul, uh, uh, not Paul, David in the Psalms, you know, clean me, wash me. Then will I teach transgressors your way. Oh, my goodness. So that's the flow. Does that help? It's such an important prayer, a uh, point, excuse me. Thank you for the question. And it's such an important point that I wanted to take a little extra time. And, 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 and what I'm also gently trying to say, yes, we have all been taught ways to pray, but mm -hmm. I believe you're here today, not by accident. This, this, uh, this prayer seminar is not by accident. I'm not by accident. God is calling his people to a higher 
place of prayer, a deeper place of prayer, a more powerful place of prayer, because we need his power in the earth right now. Mm, and listen. so so we're moving from um, so so we're all growing better. OK, enough. A- amen. I, I can listen to you all day. Um, um, yes, I thank you. Thank you for um, that. Um, we had an, another question in the chat um, with regards to um, prayer and faith. So um, one comment was, um, sometimes I feel like the man when he said to Jesus, I believe, but help me with my unbelief. It's challenging for me to believe some of my prayers. Um, And I appreciate the person who shared that, you know, being very transparent. Um, What would you say to her in terms of um, that, um, sharing that and that uh, feeling, which she is not alone in. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for the question. Cause that is so important. And don't be shamed, my sister, because I have gotten out of prayer and said, mm, I don't believe that myself. <laughs> and so I thank God for his wisdom that he put that in the word for us to see. The man went to Jesus. Now the man is face to face with Jesus. Help thou my unbelief. God is so good. He knew that. And so when you're feeling it, say, Lord, I'm like the man that faced Jesus. Help my unbelief. And watch watch the Holy Spirit move and help you. He will. Um, Help me, Lord. I don't understand your word, that, that psalm that I gave you. He will open up. The entrance of God's word gives life. And, 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 and thank you. Yes, I pray. But I've got so much growing to do. And even as I share these things with you, I am yet learning. The Lord is yet working with me. And yes, I am grateful. That's one of my uh, favorite passages. Help thou my unbelief. It's a process of growing. Each new experience with God gives us more. And uh, I see something else related to this. I'm going to relate it if you don't mind, Sister Ty. Mm -hmm. Struggling with lack of confidence Mm -hmm. in praying with others. Oh, yeah, me too. Every day. (laughs) I do. And, you know, you know, and we can be we can be cruel. Right. Oh, ask sister so-and-so to pray. Cause you know, she can really get a prayer through the God. And I used to just cringe. Well, I, you know, and we ought not to do that because remember when Peter was out on the water, long as Peter kept his eyes on Jesus, he was okay. But when Peter looked at those waves like, whoa. And what did he say? Lord, save me. I call it the Peter prayer. Sometimes that's how, Lord, I'm like, Peter, save me. God answered his prayer. Peter walked the rest of the way. And so um, confidence, the confidence is not in us. Sister Lucas, the confidence is in our God. Again, that, that's, if I could say it this way, that's the psychology of Hmm. understanding why we want to put God first. It ain't about us. If it were dependent on roles, y'all need to know I'd have nothing. (laughs) But it's all about God. And so when you say, Lord, help me to pray. Sometimes I'm saying, Lord, I don't know what to pray for. Show me, Lord, show me something in your word. And he will take you there. He's not up there trying to say, gotcha, or trying to mess you up. What does the word say in James? If you lack wisdom, ask God who will give you liberty, liberally. Well, if I may take a liberty, I say, if you lack courage, 
ask God. He'll give you liberally. If you lack understanding, ask God. He'll give you liberty because that's that's the exchange. Put God first. I, I don't know how else to say it. But thank you. No. These are wonderful questions and common to all of us. Thank you. <laughs> no, I, I really appreciate um, your response. And I think one of the big things I've been taking away from how what you've been talking about is centering God in our prayers, centering God um, in prayer um, and how um, as we center God, um, then our prayer flows out of that. Our prayer life flows out of that. Our confidence um, in prayer flows out of that. So much flows out of that when we center God. And I, I just want to share one, just one other thing that you mentioned. Post, the posture of prayer is reverence. Um, I don't know if I've ever heard it shared that way, um, but I wrote that down and highlighted that um, as just a really key uh, thing for us to take away. Um, Literally, we could ask you questions all day. Um, will you all please join me in thanking, thanking, thanking um, our guest, uh, Dr. Rose Owens West, uh, for this awesome, awesome presentation um, and just sharing with us, um, again, not only from, you know, what you study, but clearly what you've walked through and lived. Um, so um, it's been awesome. It has been awesome. and. Um, I definitely see the expressions in the chat. Um, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you all again um, for attending. Um, I pray that the breakout sessions were uh, fruitful for you. Um, they probably felt like they were a little too short. So hopefully the next time that we do this, um, we'll um, create a longer space for our breakout sessions. But I hope that you got something in them um, that you know helped you put into practice what we've discussed and um, and spark kind of more exploration and prayer. Um, I do wanna say on behalf of the Prayer Warriors Ministry, I wanna thank all of you uh, for coming. I wanna extend a heartfelt thanks to our pastor who made this all possible, Reverend Dr. Jacqueline A. Thompson, our awesome guest speaker, Dr. Rose Owens West, our breakout session leaders, Reverend Will Brown, Deacon Lawrence Hill and Reverend Lana Rice. Um, Thank you all for what you shared and sown today and um, given to everyone. And I just pray that you will receive back all that uh, you've poured into us today. I um, want to invite those of you who are interested, perhaps, in being part of the prayer ministry. Um, we're always looking for more people to join us in prayer. You know, the Bible says one can chase a thousand, but two can put 10,000 to flight. Um, so in the words of our um, our favorite local team, there is strength in numbers. So if you are interested um, in being part of the prayer ministry, we would love to have you. Please email us at prayer at allen-temple.org and we'll reach out and share more information. The other thing is if you're in need of prayer, you can also write to us at that address. There's also um, a phone number. Um, if you do not do email, you can also call the church office at 510-544-8910 um, if you're in need of prayer. And we do receive those prayer requests and pray for them during the week. Um, so um, after our closing prayer, which will be done by our um, guest speaker, we will have a raffle. We're raffling off uh, three prayer journals um, to help you as you're on your prayer journey to record your experiences in prayer and record the things that you Ask God about the things that God shares back with you. So, um, but you got to stay till the end to get that. So after our closing prayer, uh, we'll have a raffle. The other thing I wanted to mention is uh, we definitely want your feedback about this event. Um, and so when you log off, there'll be a survey that's presented to you. We'd love for you to complete the survey or you can leave comments in the chat or email us at the prayer at allen-temple.org email address with any feedback that will assist us in, you know, doing these kinds of things in the future, improving them, of course, um, and other things you just like to see from our ministry. So we thank you again for your time today. And with that, I'm going to turn it over to our um, guest speaker to close us out in prayer. 
I want to just say quickly thank you to, again, to um, Dr. Thompson, to Sister Ty Scott and the Prayer Warriors Ministry, and to all of you who participated today. It was indeed a blessing for me, and I thank God above all. Let's pray. Abba Father, we love and honor you, and you are worthy of all our praise and worship, and we magnify your holy name. Father God, we thank you that Jesus showed us how to pray. And we, your people who are called by your name, we ask God that you make us those people who will humble themselves, who will pray, who will seek your face and, 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 and turn from our wicked ways and that you may hear from heaven, forgive us and heal our land. Father God, we thank you for your word. We ask that you make our hearts and spirits good soil in which your word will be planted deeply and bring forth in our lives 30, 60, and 100 fold. Now, Father God, continue to lead us through your word, guiding us to pray as Jesus taught. Forgive us for any hindrances in our prayer life. Give us courage. Give us understanding. Help us to rely totally on you. And we ask that you help us to over in, overcome anything that would block our daily communing with you. We give you honor and glory now and forever. We ask you to seal this time. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 So this concludes our, um, our event today. We thank you so much for joining again. If you want to take a few moments before you leave to drop any comments in the chat for us, um, ways that we can improve things that you'd like to see more of. Um, also, when you log out of the event, you will be presented with a survey, so you can do it that way as well um, and share um, your feedback in the survey. But we thank you all for joining today. We'll keep the event open for maybe another three or four minutes for those of you who want to put a comment in the chat for us. And if not, have a blessed rest of your Saturday.